In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly King, Paraclete, Spirit of Truth, you who are everywhere present and fill all things, treasury of all that is good and master of life, come, dwell within us, cleanse us from all stain, and save our souls, O good one. Mary, cause of our joy, pray for us. The first part of uh, this preparation for the Feast of the Baptism of the Lord is going to highlight something that I want to then apply to us. Um, you may remember, of course it depends again how long ago you were ordained, Anyoshite uh, quadagitis imitamini quad tractatis. Recognize what you're doing, imitate what you're handling, or what you're doing. That's from the ordination right. Imitate what you are carrying out. That is, give your life to the Father as a victim, just the way Jesus did. We say we're going to do that. In fact, we, as I'll read later on, we, we say, yes, I'll, I agree to do that. Uh, along with some other remarks that are like that in the ordination rite. Well, this is a feast of the baptism of Jesus. So I want to start back there to show you that even in the Gospel text, so I'm going to start with First John, Jesus' baptism was his total acceptance of his vocation to be the Son of Man, to be the Messiah, to be the one who dies in an act of love and redeems the whole world. John's baptism, the Baptist baptism, uh, was basically a call to the Jews to accept their vocation to be Jews, act like real Jews. That's why he says, look, I tell you, God can raise up from these stones people to be Jews. You've got, you've got to live out your vocation. And so Jesus comes along. And Baptist says, I should be baptized by you. Jesus says, let it be for now. We must fulfill all righteousness. Righteousness, that's Sadek. In, in now in Greek, Dikiosini. It's the Father's will. Jesus irrevocably committed himself to dying on the cross the moment he was baptized. That's why during his life, he will refer to that moment of the cross as a baptism. Now, the first letter of John picks that up in a very powerful way. And I'm creating this background so that we'll, we can see what our call is, how important it is that with Jesus we be offered to the Father. And we're the only ones who can do it. Jesus can take us with him, but we have to be willing to go with him. So, it starts in 1 John 5, 6. This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ. Now, you need a little bit of Greek grammar here. Utos estin hoelton. Hoelton is an aorist participle. We don't have them in English. It would be called, this is the caming one. He came. That's the way John often describes the whole ministry of our Lord. He came. You see? He came through uh, water and blood. Not through water alone, but through water and blood. And the Spirit is tomartirun. The Spirit is the one bearing witness. So you see the whole plan. The Trinity is working out our salvation. Jesus you see, is the one who came in water and blood. But the Spirit is the one that makes it real to us. So we have Jesus, the caming one, and the Spirit, the witnessing one. But the caming one is the one who ineluctably gave his whole life at the baptism and then fulfilled it at the cross. And so that's what 
all of this is about. And so, now, it doesn't happen at our baptism, but it does happen uh, at our ordination. Um, this is some lines from Raniero Canto La Mesa. Oh my goodness, uh, I forgot he also quotes uh, 1 John. Um, that he was, he was baptized embracing the Father's plan that he be the suffering servant. He was crucified, thus bringing the plan to its completion. Jesus knew from the moment he stepped into that water and went under it that he was committed to be a victim. He knew it, and he suffered his victimhood through the next one and a half, two, whatever, three years, whatever it was. Uh, you know, rejection, mockery, failure, betrayal, and finally physical pain. And in that, Mary entered in. Uh, and so, um, I didn't realize that uh, Contella Mesa did this. If you look up, if you, if you uh, Google um, Imitamini Quad Tractatis, some of this will come up for you if you'd like to look at it. Um, all right. But here's our ordination rite. Are you resolved to consecrate your life to God for the salvation of his people and to unite yourself more closely every day to Christ the High Priest who offered himself for us to the Father as a perfect sacrifice? And we all said, I am, with the help of God. Later on in the, second, in the, in the ritual, uh, the bishop hands us the bread and wine and says, accept from the holy people of God the gifts to be offered to him. Know what you are doing. Imitate what you celebrate. Imitamini quad tractatis. Imitate what you're handling, what you're doing. Model your life on the mystery of the Lord's cross. How did we forget that? You know, we talk about being ministers and servants and presiders and, and we're, I guess we're all that. But the thing that we are more than anything else is a victim along with Jesus. Now that doesn't mean that every day is nothing but excruciating pain. But it does mean that our, the secret of our priesthood and its flourishing is to be one with Jesus in his self-offering. And so, you see, it, it starts, you see, um, with uh, Jesus' baptism, which in that sense, if you wish, was his ordination. His ordination was completed on the cross, sir. And he exercises his priesthood in heaven, as the letter to the Hebrews teaches us. You see, Paul says, I beseech you, all the faithful, because Christ lives in all of us, offering himself that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, pleasing unto God. You see? Uh, so the church, the spouse and minister of Christ, performs together with him the role of priest and victim, offers him to the Father, and at the same time makes a total offering of herself together with him. So where's church? St. Therese. People, you know, uh, uh, little Miriam in Bethlehem, uh, Faustina, Padre Pio, as church. I live, now not I, Christ lives in me. But it is an intrinsic part of the priestly vocation. So as we begin now to uh, uh, ponder this uh, notion, I want to take it one step further. I want to look at um, the washing of the feet in John, chapter 13. He came to Simon Peter. Peter said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? What is Jesus doing? I should read a little bit at the first. You see, knowing his hour had come, that he should pass from the world, this world to the Father, having loved his own in the world, loved them to the extreme, to the end. So when supper, when supper was in progress and the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, Simon, the son of Simon the Iscariot, that he should betray him, 
knowing that the Father gave everything into his hands and that he came out from God and that he was going to God, so he knows who he is. Now what does he do? He rose from the meal and put aside his garments. Let this mind be in you which is in Christ Jesus, that though he was by nature God, did not consider being equal to God something to be clung to. Rather, he emptied himself. He took off his garments. You see, this is an acted out parable of that hymn in Philippians, okay? Put a tied a towel around himself, which is the clothing of a slave. Put on the form of a slave. Put water into a basin and wash the feet of his disciples and dry them. He's a slave. And he's acting out his passion. See, and that's why he says, now, if I do not wash you, if you don't be touched by my passion, you have no part in me. Jesus is acting out. This you can see many, many places. Huh? Jesus also says, I washed your feet, so you must wash one another's feet. You must serve one another. But what is the diakonia? What is the service that's most powerful? The Son of Man has come not to be served, but to serve. And that diakonia is what? To give his life as a ransom for many. That is his service. That's what he's acting out here at the washing of the feet. And he's telling us, telling especially the apostles and their assistants us, that's what I want you to do. I want you to pour out your lives. So you see, if I have time, we could go through how many of these texts allude to this. I have a baptism with which I am to be baptized, how I am straightened until it happens. You see? So the diaconia of the priest is that he pour out his life like Jesus. And so while we're considering the baptism of Jesus, uh, we're also considering our own ordination. And while um, this is important for the people to understand, because you see, the whole church has to do this. The whole church has to act out the mystery of Jesus. Um, and, and the people who do it, you know, I must say I'm privileged to know some people who are victim souls. They are happy, they're peaceful, they're clear, they're bold, they're a delight because they give their lives to Jesus in the vocation that's theirs. And they imitate Jesus, who at his baptism gave himself irrevocably to his vocation to be the suffering Son of Man. And we have to give ourselves to our vocation in the same way.